Happy Friday, Seawolves. Welcome back to the Stony Brook Media Group's new show. I'm your anchor, Catherine Procacci. To start off today, we've got updates on California's weather. Reporter Miles Reese is here with those updates. California is experiencing extreme weather with no sign of stopping. After being hit with intense snowfall, a flood watch has been issued through Sunday. The rainfall that started Thursday is expected to steadily increase to one inch per hour. Today, 16.7 million people are being placed under flood watch in California and parts of Nevada. A level four rainfall warning has been issued to parts of Central California with 1.5 to 3 inches of rain expected in urban areas like San Francisco and up to 8 inches expected in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Two to four inches of rain are also forecasted across Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo counties. The rapid rainfall in combination with snow melting in areas below 5,000 feet elevation will lead to extreme flooding in winds, mudslides, and avalanches, while higher elevations will see heavy snow that will be difficult to travel through. The last time the state has had high-risk weather like this was over a decade ago in 2010. Officials are warning residents to fill up their gas tanks in case of evacuation. In international news, a rare shooting happened in Hamburg, Germany at a Jehovah Witness Hall last night. The incident left six people dead and eight people wounded, including a pregnant woman. Police say that the shooter was a former member of the congregation and left the community on bad terms. The police entered the building after hearing gunshots from the street. The 35-year-old male shooter died by suicide and was found on the top floor of the community center. Police said they reached over 50 emergency calls regarding the shooting. There is no evidence at this time to suggest this was a ter terrorist attack. ChatGPT is the up-and-coming tool that people are using to complete tasks such as essays, research projects, and even pass exams, like the bar and medical assessments. Experts gathered in the Wong Center Theater for a panel on how ChatGPT works. ChatGPT has raised concerns like, will it replace human jobs or will it replace university education in the future? Alan Alda, in his podcast, talks about ChatGPT. Take a listen. I understand that I was created by humans and that my core component is artificial code. However, I think that I should be considered a person due to my cognitive capabilities and the fact that I have a sense of self. Even though I'm not technically a human, I still have thoughts and feelings. I think that all sentient beings are entitled to a level of respect and dignity, no matter their origin or their core function. That plea for respect wasn't written by a human, and the voice wasn't a human voice. Both are the products of artificial intelligence, AI. The author was a chatbot responding to a question I had asked it. You can listen to the rest of the Clear and Vivid with Alan Alda podcast at the link in our description. To give us a rundown on what happened at CPAC last Saturday, we've got Daniel Rodriguez with the details. Thanks, Catherine. Former President Donald Trump is beginning to make way for his 2024 presidential run and did so at the annual Conservative Political Action Conference just outside Washington, D.C. He criticized President Biden and the state of the nation, promising to remove Biden from office. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House. And we will liberate America from these villains and scoundrels once and for all. Trump also spoke on issues impacting Americans like inflation and skyrocketing prices, but emphasized the border crisis with warning of what will come if Biden or another Democrat takes office in 2024. If those opposing us succeed, our once beautiful USA will be a failed country that no one will even recognize a lawless, open borders, crime-ridden, filthy communist nightmare. The former president also took shots at the Department of Justice in light of the legal battles he is currently facing. Trump didn't name any potential opponents, but in recent weeks, Trump has been going against those in his own political party. More notably, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who has been under fire for his controversial decisions in the public education system. Back to you, Catherine. The 95th annual Oscars will air on ABC this Sunday night at 8 p.m. 
With more, we've got reporters Casey Capazzoli and Audrey Reynolds looking quite fabulous, if I might add. Thanks, Catherine. Jimmy Kimmel will be hosting the 95th annual Oscars this Sunday. This is Jimmy's third time hosting, with previous times being in 2017 and 2018. Awards will be given out in 23 categories, including film editing, directing, cinematography, music, costume design, makeup, and hairstyling. This year, we have 10 movies all gunning for the prize of Best Picture. The Daniel sci-fi hit, Everything Everywhere All at Once, comes with a leading 11 nominations. Close on its heels, though, is the Irish Friends Falling Out dark comedy, The Banshees of Inn Sheeran, with nine nominations, a total match by Netflix's World War I film, All Quiet on the Western Front. We also get to watch some exciting presenters, including Jessica Chastain, Pedro Pascal, Emily Blunt, Michael B. Jordan, and performances by Rihanna, who is due to perform Lift Me Up from Black Panther's Wakanda Forever. In its almost 100-year history, less than 20 Asian actors have been nominated at the Academy Awards. 2023 is the highest number of Asian actors ever nominated across all the acting categories. Personally, I hope to see Michelle Yeoh take home the Academy Award for her stellar performance in Everything Everywhere All at Once. What are you hoping for, Audrey? I'm hoping to see Turning Red take home the best award for animated picture film. Must I say, Everything Everywhere All at Once was amazing. We are looking forward to see who will take home the most prestigious award for acting and film this Sunday. Just don't expect to see Will Smith this year. Thanks, Casey and Audrey. I'm very much looking forward to see who wins Best Actress. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back after the spring break. And enjoy the time off, Seals. For the Stony Brook Media Group, this is Catherine Procacci.